So, uh, what's up everybody, it's Pykel, welcome to uh, League of Items YouTube channel. My brain's not working right now because LS was just released from Cloud9. I don't know anything that's going on with this situation, all I can say is I'm shocked. I didn't change a title from the saddest lions to anything about C9 because fuck the mad lions. Um, but with Cloud9... Um, It'll be really interesting to see the fallout from all of this. I don't know if there was any wrongdoing on either side, so I don't want to talk about that specifically. But I think that this might actually be a blessing in disguise for League of Legends at large. Obviously, um, LS like deserves a lot of credit for being able to implement implement these ideas on the pro level. And I know it hasn't worked over a long period of time, but over the past couple of weeks, he's brought a lot of hype. And um, I think a lot of people have had their eyes open to see that there are actually reasons to trust these kinds of ideas and people who um, have these kinds of opinions on things. The reason I think it might be a good thing for the League of Legends community at large, uh, assuming there's nothing wrong that, uh, that happened like with LS or something, is that LS would be able to give out more information and more understanding as somebody who's not affiliated with a professional organization. I know that might not be what's best for LS um, or what he wants, but just from a move, like just from advancing the sport, advancing the esport, I think that LS not being on a professional team could be best for League of Legends. And I know that might seem kind of weird, but um, I think it just might be true. He d he creates a lot of content. Um, I don't know if this was like a step backwards financially for him taking a coaching position, so maybe this will be a good thing economically. Um, but yeah, I know that he probably wanted this opportunity to prove that he could be a coach as well but i think it's more about the ideas for him i, I think that um well i guess we just have to wait to kind of see what happens um but uh, i just it's it's insane how stuff like this happens i don't i don't know if i've i don't know if anything like this has happened in esports before where well in league of legends specifically where such a huge personality um was fired with like no lead up or released with no lead up like it'll be very interesting to see what ends up happening but uh let's try to get everything back to normal let's talk about the games from yesterday so we had omg against world elite omg slapped around world elite um i still think that the world elite line was bad they didn't draft well in my opinion um and I know that's kind of like an easy thing for people to generally point to, but Gwen is just such a broken champion. Um, if you don't have good uh, responses to it in the draft, or like your team isn't good against good against it, then just don't let it go through. If if you're going to play Jin, don't let it go through. And the one thing, in, especially especially in the first game, for a champion like Gwen, who's going to have Rift Maker, she's going to have Zanyas, and then she can go plated Steel Caps. When you have Graves, Volibear, TF, Jinx, you're not going to do enough damage to somebody like Gwen who has that uh, that over the overwhelm mechanic where she can just uh, kind of heal through everything and pump out a lot of damage, especially against an immobile lady carry. Um, so it's it's kind of frustrating. And then obviously game two they picked Jin, so I instantly turned off the match. Uh, BLG against anyone's legends. Um, my takeaway from this match is that. BLG doesn't need Uzi, and it's not really because of this match. I guess it's not. It's it's a realization I had while I was watching parts of this match. They don't need Uzi because when you swap out eighty carries, especially in in this type of meta where there's hyper carries, if you have a good hyper carry player, you don't need two of them, and that's essentially what Uzi is. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what they were thinking with that. I don't know how much money they're paying him. Uh, Kind of seems like a waste if you ask me. Uh, we'll see what they end up doing with that situation. And then in the last match in China, Top Esports beat JDG. That was surprising to me. Jackie Love had his best performance of the year. Um, I think that you sh we should be giving Top Esports a lot of credit for this win. Um, in the first game, Draven was played by Jackie Love. Jackie Love was playing that um, 
when they were on their world's run. That like that's like a pocket pick for Jackie Love. Um, so that's good to see. Jackie Love is the kind of player who's better in non hyper carry metas as well. So if we continue to if if we eventually move away from Jinx and Ephelios into things like Zeri, Draven, Kaisa, um, even Ezreal, I think that'll probably be a better meta for um, for Jackie Love. Um, Ezreal could be played in certain spots against um, Jinx more so than Aphelios. Um, so we'll see if that ends up happening. But good win by Top Esports. Hanma Life beat um, Hanma Life 2-0 DRX yesterday. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned this during the, the initial video or the one yesterday. I don't like playing DRX as favorites. They just scare me. They can beat good teams. They can lose to bad teams. Um, and I know that's theoretically possible for anybody. It just it just seems like DRX falls apart in spots like this more often. This was Deft's anniversary for his like first um, LCK performance, which kind of sucks that it, that it happened like this. Uh, get upset um, on your anniversary. And then we had Kwang Dong Freaks take care of Fredit Brion. Um, so that's it for that. Let's go over to the LEC. So in the LEC, we had XL beat Astralis, uh, which I had. SK Gaming beating BDS, which I had. Misfits beating Mad Lions, which I had. Um, Vitality lost to Rogue, which I was on the Vitality side. It's obviously a very tough matchup. And then Fnatic beat G2, same thing. Um, those are, I guess, relatively thin spots. So this weekend I went 5-5 five and five in the LEC really explosive region the best of the best of ones are generally difficult um but still somewhat annoying to me um in the xl versus stralis match we had a gwen win so when you're blue side and you get gwen and jinx on your team i think you're probably going to win the game uh jinx blue side i think that eventually blue side drafting is going to come down to did the other team ban jinx if no pick jinx um it's a pretty pretty stupid thing to let happen at this point it's just it happens so many games uh misfits was able to upset mad lions um i guess some people wouldn't consider it an upset um what was the line yeah so they were slight favorites um they they did have a comeback though uh, i'm pretty sure that mad lions was ahead in the early game and then gave it away um, the fact that the kill score was 10 to 7 is pretty interesting because, yeah, so at one point it was like 9 to 3, but Mad Lions was down 5,000 gold, I think. And it just shows that the type of damage you have on your team matters. Like, Wukong, he needs his abilities to pump out damage, and when he does pump out damage, it's really not going to be that much, or at least it's not going to compete with Graves, Corky, Aphelios. Then we had uh, Volibear, same thing. Like, he does some damage, but he's not a carry. Vex is a good burst mage, but she doesn't really do enough damage. She's, like, more of, like, an assassin, bruiser, battle mage kind of thing where uh, you really need her abilities to be doing anything. And you need to land the abilities, which is, obviously, it makes the, the skill cap much more uh, difficult to reach. As opposed to something like Corky, where you just stand there and you hit your R button 15 times. And then if one of those lands, you get, like, a free objective. So... Stupid champion. Uh, Vitality against Rogue. This game looked particularly bad, and I'm I think that whoever the coach is for Vitality um, is probably someone we should not want to coach our team. Actually, I think it's Dylan Falco, right? I do like Dylan Falco. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Positional coach. Who's the head coach? Okay, Mephisto is the head coach. Okay, so we don't like him. Um, and I don't know how much of it is really like his fault and how much of it is the fault of the players, but um, blending Alfari self-made and perks together has apparently been difficult. Perks on Galio, I don't want to see that. Why isn't he playing something like 
Corky. Like he can't figure out how to play Corky. Like I'm sure he's I'm sure he's good enough at Corky to pull it out on stage. Just play something that has a high damage threshold. Um, Alfari hasn't really been doing enough to create large advantages and uh, convert them against good teams. So that's somewhat concerning. And then in the last game we had Fnatic against G2. Wonder was on Camille. We had a TF. We had Pike. So that's a pretty interesting game from Fnatic. Um, they might they might just be Rogue and Fnatic. I, I think are going to be pretty tough to beat in the playoffs. Like I still have hope that Vitality can turn it around, but it'll be somewhat difficult. Um, let's switch onto the screen. So, so here we have the remaining matches uh, in in Europe. Let me try to enlarge this. So, Mad against Astralis, I think Mad wins. Vitality against G two. I mean, I'm just gonna put Vitality just so we can go through this uh, thought experiment. Mad Lions against Excel, give it to Mad. Vitality against SK, give it to Vitality. Vitality against Misfits. That's obviously a tough game. Mad against Fnatic, that's obviously a tough game, so you might want to take like those wins away. Um, and then Vitality against Astralis, they should pick that one up, and Mad Lions against BDS, they should pick that one up. So if if this is correct, right? If both of these teams go 4-0, or if they both go 3-1, and um, then Vitality should have the advantage over Mad Lions and will be in the playoffs. Um, the other scenario is, can XL lose, like, how many games do they need to lose? XL needs to lose probably two matches, two or three matches. So who is XL playing? XL, could they lose to, uh, to SK? Sure. Can they lose to XL? Sure. And that's actually pretty important because Mad Lions will directly impact XL's, um, record. Um, and vice versa. Like, I think if XL beats Mad Lions, then XL probably clinches playoffs, I would assume. Um, then XL up against Rogue, they should lose that. So, you know, one up against G2. I think that you should probably think that they're more likely to lose than win. And then Fnatic, same thing. So, if XL goes two and three, they'll be nine and nine. So, Mad would really need to go four and oh. Why do they have 4 0 is 9 and 8? Oh, they can't go 4 0. So then this match would determine it basically again. And then Vitality, if they win 1, 2, 3, 4, then their game against Mad Lions really doesn't matter. So that's the way that Mad Lions and Vitality could both get through. If, if Vitality goes undefeated, which is unlikely, and Mad Lions goes 4 and 1. Or four and one, or three and two, and beat XL. Then they, I guess, they can still make it. So that'll be a lot of fun to pay attention to during next week's games. Um, I still can't believe the C9 stuff. Can't wait until the rest of the information comes out for that. Um, and then today, oh, CLG won that game. Burn down Jenkins. Wait, is this game over? Hmm. Yeah, this is from today. 38 minutes. Oh. Contract. Well, that was fast. They updated that fast. Um, okay. So again, let's see how Ophelios and Jinx do. So Ophelios, or uh, Jinx is 1-0, Jinx is 2-0, Jinx is 3-0, Jinx is banned, and then Jinx loses. So 3-1. and one. Um, someday. Again, we've been talking about Gnar a lot recently, conditional engage, kind of difficult to play around. Corky Jinx is very popular. This game, this is exactly what I was talking about with TSM. They've kind of found a way to play around tactical. Just get to the get to the 25 to 30 minute mark, play around one or two gigantic team fights with high economy items, and you have a chance to win. I don't like um, Staff of Flowing Water. I, I'm pretty sure that's not an optimal choice for this kind of team composition if you're looking to buff up a Jinx. But, you know, they won. Um, 
and then Shirelli is kind of the same thing. Although I guess the Shirelli is I can see because it helps uh, Jinx be evasive in the late game team fights. Team Liquid against Evil Geniuses. This was a bad draft from Evil Geniuses in my opinion. I, I just don't understand why teams on the red side are giving away Jinx. And I don't understand why you would play Jin into it. Jin's a bad champion. I would love for someone out there to give me an actual explanation of why you, as a professional team, they would want to be in this matchup. Like, I want, I need somebody to explain that to me. I really genuinely don't understand. Um, then Dig and FlyQuest. So the Jinx was banned. Aphelios wasn't picked. Um, Jose Diodo on a, on a good Lee Sin game. So this is a very good meta for Jose Diodo. The fact that he can play Lee Sin Hecarim like every single game is kind of what we saw when he first came into the league and people were excited about him. Um, that's really what you want. Um, if you're uh, FlyQuest fans, that was a pretty easy upset spot, I think, uh, from a value perspective on the sports book. I, it wasn't tremendous value or anything like that, but they were... They were like plus 155 or plus 160, which is somewhat, somewhat extreme. Um, and then CLG gets the upset over Cloud9. That line was like humongous. That was not the closing line. It was not minus 369. What's the one I had? Um, yeah, it was plus 522. Um... Okay, so let's go to tomorrow's games. Tomorrow, we don't have anything in the LEC. We do have matches in the LPL, and we do have matches in the LCK. So let's start in the LPL. We have, actually, All right, we have LNG against RNG, right? LNG, RNG. Why is it? Oh, I, I clicked on the wrong one. All right, so the first game is Rare Adam against Thunder Talk. Uh, Rare Adam, I probably just prefer the Rare Adam side. Thunder Talk is good enough to take a game. Uh, I'm not really excited to watch that match. EDG against Invictus Gaming. I don't think that I don't think that Invictus Gaming has a really good chance to win the match, but I do like their chances to win one game. Um, they've been playing pretty well recently. It's a minus seven sixty nine to plus four seventy one. Uh, I would look at the plus one and a half maps on that. And then LNG against RNG. Ale against Bin. Bin is good enough to win this match. Uh, Tarzan against Wei. I prefer Tarzan. Um, Doon B against Xiaohu. They're both very good. There's just splitting hairs. Light and Lumao against Gala and Ming. Um, I, th I don't really have a huge preference there either. Um, this is a very good matchup. I think that RNG lost their last match. So maybe people are upset that RNG lost the money. Um, RNG, RNG, RNG lost to V5 as a minus 213 favorite. So this is a spot where you're getting them as an underdog. I think I think it's a good, it's an interesting spot for for RNG. I, I, would, understand, I would understand why you wanted to make that bet. Um, one... The jungle kind of freaks me out, but that's okay. Should be a good Tarzan meta. Well, it is a good Tarzan meta. Um, almost all metas are good Tarzan metas, though. Damon Gaming against KT Rolster. Like I said at the beginning of the week, this might be a good upset spot for KT Rolster. Same thing for Nongshim against T1. I know that T1 has looked incredible this season um, and at times unbeatable, but these are the kind of matches that... Um, can kind of shock you. Um, the only one problem is the roster uncertainty. I don't know uh, who Nongshim will be starting. 
uh, you need the full roster to feel good about it. So, so if like I, I probably wouldn't play them on DraftKings, but if you're watching the match and you see the rosters and you can get a live bet on Nongshim, um, I would do that plus one and a half maps probably. Dom Juan against KT Rolster, kind of the same thing. Uh, Dom Juan hasn't looked as good. I, I'm not betting them at minus 323. Maybe this is a time to play them on DraftKings with like depressed ownership. Uh, and then let's go to the LCS. Uh, Immortals against Evil Geniuses. Obviously, I'm on the Evil Geniuses side. FlyQuest and 100 Thieves. I think that FlyQuest could, could get another upset here. Um, they just seem to have a really good read on the game right now. Things like, and the thing is, is in, in a game against 100 Thieves, there's a good chance that they are, I think they are the blue side team. Um, I think that makes it slightly more likely they pick Jinx. Um... And then they could still have Lee Center Hecarim. I, I would really like it if they like just kept playing Hecarim because it'll make it more difficult for FBI to play um, his play style. TSM against Cloud9. Um, I mean, now that now that LS is gone, I feel like everybody's going to want to play TSM against Cloud9. I could see it, especially at plus 400. T uh, TSM seems to have turned it around. Um, in the sense of having an identity now. They know that, you know, if we just play around tactical, he might win us a late-game team fight. Um, and when you're struggling as much as they are, that's kind of an okay situation to put yourself in. Then we have Dig and Golden Guardians. Uh, I'm on the Dig side. And then Team Liquid and CLG. I don't care if CLG won today. I will not be picking them. Plus 640 is kind of interesting, though. So like I said, I can't wait to see what happens with the C9 stuff. It'll be interesting to see what happened with LS. I'm sure that they'll explain it, you know, today or tomorrow. Um, LS hasn't said anything on Twitter besides that he was told he was being released like a couple hours ago. Somebody on, somebody on Twitter, I think, was saying that, or posted a picture of um, LS wanted to be able to get a green card or pass. No, he doesn't need a green card or passport. What am I talking about? Uh, never mind. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.